Hi, it's Ian Schnur. Welcome back to my video tutorial series on the top 10 reasons your balance sheet doesn't balance. In this video, I'm going to share the fifth in my 10 tips on what to look for when a balance sheet doesn't balance. In the next three videos, so this one and in the next two, I want to talk about another major problem that prevents balance sheets from balancing, and that is sign issues. You know, when you build a financial model, there are a few financial concepts for which you need to switch the sign of a value within the model. Meaning at certain points in the model, a value will need to be positive, but at other points in the model, that same value will need to be negative. And if you don't make the switch, your balance sheet will not balance. So as I mentioned, there are three places in particular where this happens with sign issues. And in this video, we're going to deal with the first of those three, and that is capital expenditures, otherwise known as CapEx. So let's go take a look at this in the model to make sure we understand what the issue is and how to make sure that this never becomes a problem in your models. So let me go ahead here and share my screen so that you can see what's going on. So here we have the Henderson model again, and I'm on the assumptions tab. I'm starting here because as I roll down, now you can see all the assumptions for the model here on this sheet. As I roll down into the second page of assumptions into row 45, I've got a value for capital expenditures. And you can see here, first of all, I would say capital expenditures always needs to be an assumption in any model you ever build. CapEx is an assumption. That's because it's a management decision. It often requires board of director approval where a management team will decide what their capital plan will be. So you need to know that. And then you enter the capital expenditure values into a model as an assumption. What I will point out though here is you'll notice these values are positive. And I will jot that down. They should always be positive on the assumption page because what we are talking about is the new fixed assets. We are talking about the new fixed assets that the company is going to purchase every year. Meaning in 20, make it blue here, in 2022, the company is going to purchase 20, 16, sorry. In 2022, the company is going to purchase $16 million worth of new assets. And in 2023, they will acquire $17 million of new assets. These are positive values because we are referring to the new assets that the company is going to acquire, to purchase. And that's why we like to keep them as positive numbers their asset values. But where does it go next? Well, the next place that CapEx usually goes in a model is on the cash flow statements. So let's go take a look. Let me click into the model sheet and here it is. Here's my cash flow statement. CapEx or capital expenditures is always in the investing activities section. So we can see it here. Here is the CapEx again and watch what it is, is a straight link. I have linked it to the CapEx on the assumption page, the line we were just looking at. But so importantly, very, very critically, you can see here, I've put a minus sign in front. It must be negative. You must, must remember to make it negative. And that's because on the cash flow statement, we are no longer talking about the new assets. In fact, this has nothing to do with the assets any longer. What are we talking about? Well, here it's negative because it is the cash outflow. Let me spell that. This is the cash outflow that the company is going to have in order to purchase the asset. So on the assumption page, we're actually talking about the new assets we're going to buy. On the cash flow statement, we're talking about the cash that we're going to use to acquire those assets. It's going to make our bank account go down. And as a result, it must be negative. So you must make sure to make it negative and copy it over. Fine. That should be pretty easy. But the problem is what happens if you forget? It is so common. I see this all the time in models. Look what I did. I removed the minus. So I've made the first year positive and I'm going to copy it to the right. So now you can see that my capital expenditure row is positive every year in the future. And 
let's go down now because people often don't notice this right away. So there it is. It's a positive value. It looks like it's a cash inflow, right? It looks like there's cash coming in instead of cash going out. But now let's go down to the balance sheet and let's create the PP&E line. In the last video, I told you that it, in many models, it's okay to build your PP&E formula right on the balance sheet. That's because it's very simple. It's a very easy, tiny formula. So it's okay as long as it's really short to do it here. So let's build it. Well, if, if people made the CapEx positive, here's what they would do. They would take the previous year's PP&E and then they would add the CapEx. Do you see that? I'm going to add in 16, which kind of makes sense. It's going up. The PPE and e is going up. I made the PPE and e go up by the CapEx. And now I will minus, I will deduct the depreciation expense, right? Because everyone knows, everyone knows that PPE and e is previous year plus your CapEx minus depreciation. Or if you didn't know that, you're learning it now, but that's a common accounting construct as to how we build pp &E. Now look, this number looks correct. Watch what happens when I copy this all the way to the end. Every year we're adding in 16 or 17 million of CapEx and deducting a little bit of depreciation. And because the CapEx and depreciation are similar, my asset value is staying pretty similar over the five years. Look, it's going from 397 to 411, not a big change. It actually looks reasonable. And this pp &E number is correct. The problem, though, as we get to the bottom here, of course, no surprise, the balance sheet doesn't balance. It's off. And if you look at it very closely, you'll know why it's off. All we need to do is cut it in half. Sometimes the way to figure out why a balance sheet off is to divide the number by two. If you've double counted something and you divide it by two, it might be easier to see what's going on. Certainly in the first year, if I divide the first year by two, um, it's possible that I'm off by 16 and I double counted something. And that's exactly what's happened. What's going on here is because my CapEx is positive, what's happening is it's making the cash account go up right? My cash account is going up, but the PP&E is also going up. So the balance sheet is off by double. My cash account is, and the real problem with this is that my error is not 16 million, as you can see. I don't have a $16 million error because of this. On the balance sheet, the, the error is double. It's 32 because instead of 16 of cash going out, it's showing 16 of cash coming in. Right, I have 16 of cash coming in to the company, which of course is wrong. And as a result, my ending cash balance is much too high, which again, fills the balance sheet. It is twice as high, it's $30 million too high approximately. So the cash is going up, the PP&E is going up, and as a result, the balance sheet is not balanced. So I'm gonna stop my screen here. Um, Actually, sorry, before I stop my screen share, let's just go back and fix this quickly. To fix it quickly, what we need to do is make sure, of course, that CapEx is negative. It's a cash outflow. And then on the balance sheet, we need to minus, minus the CapEx. If we minus the CapEx, it adds it. And then we minus the depreciation. If I copy that over, of course, now what we have is the cash is going down. Cash went down, pp &E went up, and the balance sheet stayed in balance. So now I'm going to stop my screen here and we will wrap up this video. As I said, it's so important to make sure you get sign issues correct. And the capital expenditure issue is the first of our sign issues. You must make sure that CapEx is positive on your assumption page because it talks about the new assets you're going to purchase. But on a cash flow statement, the CapEx must be negative. Make sure you get that right and you'll never have a problem with your CapEx. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the second of the issues that deals with sign changes. I'll see you in the next video.